Hey guys. Um, <laughs> Good morning. Welcome to another episode of Mafia Memoirs. If you could see the background stuff that goes on to make these happen, you would just be amazed at, that these two guys can actually pull it off. <laughs> Uh, yeah. My name's Jody Cedric. I'm Rod Pusey. And we are the Zimware team, and we are super excited to have you guys join us for another episode of Mafia Memoirs. Looks like Sean Sepulveda is watching. Good hey, morning. Woohoo! Good morning. You sound like you're, um, the, what's that movie with? Um, Good morning, Vietnam. Yeah, Good, so morning. Like, Good morning. Good morning, Vietnam. Sean's so. probably got some cool bright red Impala or something in his shop today that we'd all drool over. Oh, man, he's been so. working on some classy stuff. And, and I noticed that you had a post that there is something coming that's going to shake and revolutionize the automotive industry. So we're waiting to hear what that is. So... Maybe we can have you as a guest on Mafia Memoirs when the appropriate time is, and you can let us know what's going on. So, we're actually waiting for Crisanto Aquino oh, to join us. So, we're going to... 78 Pinto. That's, yeah, yeah baby. I had a red 78 Pinto when I was a Dude. kid. Right, we got Crisanto coming on board. So, Chris, I'm just wondering if Crisanto is bringing some chicken adobo and some lupia. <laughs> Bring some energy. Hey, 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 there you go. La, there you go. Yeah, baby. Right <laughs> on. Good morning to you. Good morning. We're super. How are you guys? We're great, man. We're super excited to have you on board, man. Oh, geez, you're making me nervous. Why? Don't, don't be nervous. Come on, man. <sighs> I don't know. This I'm is, not used to this. Uh, it's easy, <laughs> dude. We we are about as easy going as it as you come. It's what you see is what you get, and we're just here <laughs> having a discussion about detailing. So, all right. So we're super excited. Oh yeah. I I just I'm telling you, you are the guy that had the biggest impact on Air Force One this year. I hands down. Oh geez, don't say that. Oh yes, you did. <laughs> I mean, you came prepared i mean you had completely wrapped your flex 3401 to look like air force one and everybody was drooling well well that's gonna be uh hard to beat now i'm thinking what i'm gonna do next that's so, right see now you gotta you step know, stay tuned i guess yeah. <laughs> i i don't even know how you top that one but we do have to give a major shout out to jester graphics you worked with exactly to, uh, do that phenomenal wrapping on that on that flex polisher so. no he definitely did a good job you know it's it took him a while you know trying to uh figure out what what he's done and how to design it and yeah he turned it was it was pretty good yeah it looks awesome. he did a good job yeah it's great so tell us how did you get started so your company is dr shine right Yes, uh, it's actually uh, Detail Bros now, so uh, I teamed up with another detailer and, oh, wow. um, you know, sharing the same passion. So, you know, it's working pretty good. But how it started, it's, it's not typical, you know, it's not the same as everybody else. Um, it was, it was, I would say, you know, detailing for me, it was basically to um, uh, forget about you know, um, problems. Um, just to give you, um, you know, a short story. Um, I'm married uh, with a beautiful daughter. Uh, she's seven years, uh, six years old, turning seven now. Um, but then, you know, before I, we had my daughter Melody, um, you know, we had two boys. We lost them. Uh, we lost the two boys. Um, the, the first one, CJ, um, we lost the baby uh, 12, 12 weeks. Oh, wow. Um, and then the second one, a year after, we lost the, another one, which is another boy. Um, his name is Malachi. It was uh, really to, like, you know, uh, forget about, you know, like, I have to find a way to not focus on the, you know, the, the pain. It was more to, you know, basically find a passion for me to, keep moving forward um you know and then detailing became my thing and you know what would you know thinking about it what would my boys do 
you know, what yeah. would I share to them? So detailing was, you know, um, yeah, detailing was my passion. So that's how it started. <clears throat> and it kept growing and growing. You know, I went to SEMA. I met Rennie back in 2012. You know, and then you know it was it was uh, after that it was it was amazing. You know, I, I you know he taught me a lot of things. You know, um, not just the detailing. It's more on you know being a family person, uh, being a dad. You know, um, you know detail mafia is not all about you know how you take care of business. It's all about taking care of your family. Right. And yeah so yeah. I, I love, and here i am i love that story that you found release you found solace you found a good place in your heart and your mind mm -hmm. through actually detailing mm -hmm. cars right because there there's something powerful about just doing something with your hands right getting away and just right. being in your own headspace and having that opportunity to mourn to go all right what can i do with my daughter and i i love that story i think that is really powerful because all of us mm -hmm. you know we, we all three of us are very engaged dads and i love your instagram and your facebook i mean you can tell that girl's got daddy's <laughs> heart and uh, you know and both all three of us have girls and there's something different about having daughters i mean they're they're just did so yeah. Well, I know. I, I just look up to Rennie, you know, having, you know, three three daughters and it's like, dude, how do you do it? That, right? That's <laughs> it's like, Rennie just joined well, us and it's a good I mean, morning Rennie and Kelly and everybody watching, but yeah, I have I three that. daughters as well. And um it, yeah. it's you know, I look at it um I look at it because I was I was an uh, only son as well in my family. Mm -hmm. I have three sisters. And so I've always been spoiled. I've always had my own toys and I didn't have to share. And so I've just kind of carried that out into my life. So now, you know, but, uh -huh. but my daughters are interested in things as well. Just like uh, Rennie's, you can't choose what your daughters are interested in. No. And so, you know, <laughs> it's, it's, I don't even know how to deal with it now because I got daughters out in my shop. And I'm yeah. like, uh, but these are my toys, you know. So you you have to i think you just adjust to it you want your kids to succeed and you know like you you want your kids to be involved in whatever they want to be involved in um exactly and and it's just i think it's just a natural part of i don't know it's hard because being a parent is hard but it's also feels really natural it's just an extension of you it's just something you're like oh well these are my kids mm -hmm. it's just how it is and and so yeah. you know i think it's great that you know you spend so much time with your daughter and we see the posts and everything and and that you're just kind of you know doing hanging out doing dad stuff you know that's just that's yeah it, it, it was it was you know it was a roller coaster you know it's because um uh starting the business i i was i didn't even know how to run business um i thought it was just really for a hobby you know again it's a passion you know i like cleaning cars and it became it you know it grew instantly and you know i've been to <clears throat> obviously uh air force one twice um you know and then when it started growing i just started panicking it's like what am i you know i lost my passion of detailing it's because of that and basically had to step back and then the fact that you know running the business i thought you know i'm making my two boys proud but then at the same time it was a struggle because i'm losing my daughter Wow. You know, it was like basically it's like hey you don't spend time with me anymore it's like geez what am i doing yeah yeah right and then it was it was a struggle for me early early this year you know so i had to like you know you know step back and focus on it and you know like obviously i had to take care of my health first because i was struggling mm -hmm. you know i had to do intermittent fasting which is amazing you know concept you know i, I was happy that i did it and now my minds are all clear, you know, I'm more energized and, you know, I basically started focusing on my daughter instead of running the business. Right. So, you know, and then now I'm, you know, I'm back to, you know, where I started. Yeah. It's all about, you know, taking care of my daughter, you know, mm -hmm. it, it just really <clears throat> how to balance things, balance, you know, uh, business, balance your, your family. And at the same time, you got to put your you know, put God too in, in, you know, what you do. Yeah. Well, and the balance, I'm, I'm getting there. Yeah. But. The balance thing is always a struggle, but I think the key to it is when, when you're in something, you're in it a hundred percent, right? 
when I come into work, mm -hmm. I am, I am, we're, I'm work mode. I mean, if, if people say, you know, Jody and I are joking and laughing and giggling all the time and stuff, but man, when we go on a trip, we are in work mode. Oh, yeah. We are, it is, <laughs> yeah. it is midnight, 1 a.m. We are hammering out work. <laughs> but, but then if you look at Jody's posts or mine on the weekends or when we're in the evenings, when we're with our, with, with our kids or our family, I am 100% with my kids and my family. I'm not, I oh. won't answer my phone on a business call when I'm out hanging out with my kids. I just don't. They can go to voicemail, yeah. they can talk to me, and people know it. And I, there's a lot of people that will argue that's not a smart thing, but it's been one of the greatest things for me to just, I just disconnect, and it's time to be with my family, it's time to focus on them yeah. and give them that attention. Yeah. Exactly. Well, I'm trying to stay away from social media as much as I can, you know. Uh, but then again, you know, it's, it's for those who don't know, I'm actually a workaholic. Um, Jody was actually asking me, he's like, what are you doing? I was like, well, I actually have two jobs. Um, I'm a machinist at aerospace, so um, that's what I do uh, full time. And then I go here in my shop uh, detailing after that. But yeah, I, um, I'm in the you know aerospace facility too, so we overhaul helicopter engines and fun stuff. So it's a, it's a different kind of detail. Right. So what's what's good thing about it is I'm kind of linking the detailing and the machining together because it's all about it's all about the details. Yeah. Right. So. So but, so yeah. you mentioned <laughs> that you've now joined forces. So who's your partner and how did that decision come about? Well, you know, um, early this year, I, I met him uh, a couple of years ago and we've been talking, you know, uh, sharing ideas. Mm -hmm. And then just recently, you know, like I was about to like really early this year, I'm just thinking of, you know, um, stepping back of detailing. It's because I want to, you know, take care of my daughter, spend more time with my daughter. And, um, I, you know, we were talking, it's like, you know, he wanted help. It's like, all right, well, what do you want me to do? And, you know, at the same time. So I'm basically part-time detailer and he's focusing on detailing full-time and then it's becoming, you know, it's, it's a, it, it worked out really well because, you know, uh, his name is Norman and yeah, he's an awesome dude. You know, every time I ask him, it's like, dude, I got to spend time with my family. It's like, yeah, go ahead. I'll take care of it. So it worked out really well. That's awesome. It's, that's it's good. a match match making <laughs> that, that's awesome that's, well that's part of it i mean part of, it's like you too yeah you got to be able to handle the person you're with and i you know and, mm -hmm. and jody just so everybody knows jody is just as weird as i am and that's why we get along i mean he's you know <laughs> i don't have a weird bone in my body oh, i don't know what man. you're talking about man like <laughs> <laughs> No, it's, it's, nah, it's, it's uh, you know, we're working. It's pretty good. Now he's actually on vacation. Um, I think he's back, but then, you know, uh, he was supposed to be here today, but unfortunately his dog passed uh, yesterday. So, um, you know, so, yeah, that's, that's yeah, rough. you have to take, uh, take that time. Oh man. So, so one of the things I don't think people know, a lot of people that I didn't know when I first saw you at Air Force One is where, where you're located. Oh, uh, we are located in uh, in the coldest uh, you know uh, province in the <laughs> in Canada, yeah. Win Winnipeg. Um, you know, uh, I didn't know I that. City. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah, I Winnipeg, Manitoba, right in the middle of Canada. So, yep. yeah. So it's one, very very cold here. One of the things we like to talk about is the different environmental factors that influence the way people do their business. So, in your environment, what are the things you have to deal with? with the cold and then how do you overcome those and keep a detailing business running in the cold because people that are in the cold weather know that there's a certain number of months you're not detailing you're doing other stuff so exactly no um during the summer you know all the the summer cars or you know ex uh, exotic um classic they're all out there um so we take care of that you know during the summer or whatever we can and then during winter we basically try to market in um, dealership. So, okay. you know, we were focused on that, trying to help them out as much as we can. Um, hopefully, you know, we can, uh, we're actually selling uh, PNS products too. We will be selling it right. to dealership. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, 
we're hoping to train them how to use it. So we're trying to find a way to, you know, um, market ourselves, not just for detailing, but, you know, different things. Um, also, we're trying to do, you know, um, cleaning houses, like interior, uh, you know, carpets and all that kind of stuff. So we have the right tool for that. Um, and yeah, so uh, that, yeah, that, yeah, we're trying our best to, you know. Well, and, and I like that you're bringing <clears throat> different items to your market, right? You recognize that not only do you have a seasonal issue, but you also have opportunities mm -hmm. in other industry sectors that detailing is applicable to. And so you're like, all right, how mm -hmm. do I carve out unique niches that we can serve to have multiple streams of income coming in to support you and your business? Mm -hmm. Well, I, I, I guess that's the reason why, you know, we're part of that uh, detail mafia group. Uh, uh, you know, it's just, we shoot some ideas. It's like, what do you do uh, during winter? You know, I, I mean, that group helped us a lot. Yeah. Um, you know, so, you know, whatever you can, I guess, just to, you know, if, if it's applicable to you, I mean, yeah, you got to share it. So, yeah, that's good. So, yeah. so one of the things is, like, obviously, you've gone through Rennie's training. And one of the things that, uh, you mm -hmm. know, we've discussed with Rennie, Rennie a lot and with different groups or different people in the mafia is that you are creating a business as opposed to a job, right? I can go yes. out and create myself a job tomorrow and market myself as a guy mm -hmm. that walks around and washes cars. business that produces a revenue stream and an income not just necessarily another job and that's what it sounds like mm -hmm. when, by <clears throat> by working with somebody else and with having different different offerings you're creating a business as opposed to just another mm -hmm. job well you know not not only that i mean like i'm i'm fortunate that you know my uh, my work my full-time work is allowing me to do this um, you know, again, that's a, a source of my income to support my family. Um, and then the detailing side, you know, it will support by itself, <laughs> you know, yeah. by us, you know, working together and, you know, um, if there's no work, I mean, you know, again, I have, you know, as long as we have vehicles here for, uh, my business partner to do, I mean, yeah, we're, we, you know, we're surviving. So that's all. Get hold of Rod today. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, so, you know, as you're looking forward and also looking back, what are some key things that you would recommend that new or growing detailers would implement in their business to make them more successful? Uh, I guess you gotta learn, learn, you know, you gotta love, like, you, like, you, gotta, you gotta love, love what you do. Um, you know, you know if, if, if the passion is no longer there, there why, 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 why do you, why, why do you, why do you keep for, um, moving forward? forward? But then, but then uh, it, it, it's, it's, it's really, it, it's really hard to manage a business, but, you know, it's, no, I, I like that because I can, I can see them, I can see by your response that it's like, look, if I don't love it, the business minutia is going to overwhelm me. It's going to make it so I'm mm -hmm. going to dread going into work every day. No, you don't want to be pulling up into your parking lot and just taking a deep breath for a minute and, and just stealing mm -hmm. your heart and going, all right, I can tackle this day. All right, come on, Jody, you got this. Get up, yeah, get yeah. up, open the door. Come on, open the door. You know, and then going to work and put on the, the game face, right? Yeah. And when you really mm -hmm. love what you're doing and you have a vision of where you're trying to go, it makes a huge difference about your attitude to come in, into work, even when it's tough, because you're going mm -hmm. to have tough days. You're going to have days where you're trying to figure out you know, how you're going to mm -hmm. grow, how you're going to market, how you're going to deal with your partner. And you know what? And, you know, that's just part of the game, right? But if you don't have yeah. that passion, then that can become really, really overwhelming. So mm -hmm. that's, that's true. true. So, yeah, that's again. Yeah. That's, Jody talks to me all the time because I have a really strong passion for old cars and, you know, hot rods and classics. And he's always going, why don't you open a shop? Why don't you open a shop? And I, I always tell him I did that before. 
And it, it took part of that passion away from me when I had to work on that stuff for other people all the time. It made it so that I didn't work on my own stuff and I didn't really want to. And so for me, I, I want that passion to be mine. And so I go work on that stuff as like you do as a release or it's had, it's what it makes me feel good to be, be creative and all of that. But I don't mm -hmm. necessarily want to go do that for other people. Yeah. You know, I don't want to work on yes, some. Yes. I mean, I love to. If Jody had a hot rod, I'd be working on it all the time with him. <laughs> but that's because I like Jody and I'd work on his stuff. But if you know somebody's bringing me their stuff all the time, it, the classic example I have is you know, all guys that want to work on hot rods hate changing the brakes on a Honda because it's just changing <laughs> the brakes on a Honda. It's just your hands are dirty and you're just working on a car. But man, when somebody brings in a McLaren or a Ferrari or something you really love working or on, your it's a different Chevy. Than my fifty-five Chevy, <laughs> right? I mean. <laughs> You know, I, I talk to people all the time, and they're like, well, I got this cool car. And I'm like, I got a 55 Chevy, a two-door 55 Chevy. And they're like, yeah, but it's in pieces. I'm like, yeah, but it's not, not anymore. <laughs> not, not, it's, not, it's, not so, it's not in pieces anymore. Yeah. And that's, that's the thing that if you've got that passion, you've got it. And there's no, to me, there's no way to get rid of it. And it, it's how you want to work that passion in. You know, for me, mm -hmm. having software that works with people that work on cars is is how i can kind of have that outlet for my passion yeah i'm still helping people out i still get to go work on cool stuff i still get to work on planes with you guys but yeah, yeah. i don't have to go change the brakes on a three-quarter ton truck <laughs> i'm out so anyway i think that's great that you've got that outlet and that you've got a partner now that you can help share that with so that's awesome yes yes yes, yes. Uh, uh you know just we're just gonna keep moving for it again it's it's I'm, I'm, I'm happy, happy that, that I got my passion back, back and I'm glad that I'm doing, I'm doing what, what, I what I love doing. That's awesome. That's great. Well, we, we really appreciate you <laughs> taking some time to visit with us. I didn't know you were in cold Winnipeg, but that that's awesome. <laughs> so, you know, yeah, that's, I think you're the first guy we've ever interviewed out of Canada. So our, our reach is yeah, now. That's what, was, uh, that's what I was, that's what I was going to ask. Yeah, yeah, you're the first of the I Canadians. Mean, I think the closest we've come is Alaska and Hawaii, but those are all part of the States technically. So, you know, and you know, you're just <laughs> North of us. So. That's yeah. good. Yeah. yeah. So, so give everybody your website, phone number, address, all that stuff, how they would get a hold of you in 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 Winnipeg or Manitoba. Uh, uh, where where, where my, my our business is Detail, detail Bros. bros. Uh, my, uh, my phone, phone number is 204 296 4275. We are located in Unit 2, 1050 Logan Avenue. Um, um, our, our website, website is detailbros.ca. Detail it's not, it's done, not yet, done yet, but you know, you know hopefully, hopefully soon. soon. That that's awesome. I and and I wish you good luck in the new venture with the partner. Um, you know, there there's a lot of power in having somebody that you can tag team with, and we just really really appreciate you taking the time to visit with us. And I'm still in awe and envious of that uh flex polisher you have <laughs> oh, oh yeah i know so so anyway hopefully i get my, my uh, polisher, polisher back, back. <laughs> <laughs> who took it <laughs> well bob, bob got it bob. so it's actually inspired me i was like i you know i can take that apart and i can do some painting and some pinstriping <laughs> and i can put it all you know yeah, you could put the Mafia Memoirs dude on on at the skull, right. man. That'd be awesome. I, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna, I'm gonna seal my, my lips right now. <laughs> <laughs> That's there awesome. You go. So you should throw it out as a challenge. It should be like AFO 2020 challenge or who brings who the brings best the polisher best polisher. I love AFO. it, and we can judge it. We'll be the judges. Bro. I'm gonna enter it. Judge it, my boy. Okay, I'm I'll entering. touch it. <laughs> I'll be the judge. Well, that's a challenge to our detailed mafia. mafia. That's, right. that's right. And I am taking bribes. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, but I write the paycheck, uh, so uh, his bribe's already sealed. Yeah, <laughs> but I take cash. <laughs> so, well, well, I, I hope didn't I didn't make you guys, make you guys cry. cry. There you go. <laughs> well, thank you very much for joining us. And I uh, wish you a great week. And uh, have some fun with that little girl, man. We we know she's got you wrapped around that finger, man. So, which it should be. Oh, so, yeah, she's a diva. A diva. That's yeah. right. So. <laughs> so is Jody. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you can't see what I'm wearing underneath this table, so. <laughs> anyway, right, Chris, well, thank you, guys. Thank, thank you, Chris. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, guys, for joining us no, for another episode of Mafia Memoirs. 
Next week, I'm traveling, so we may have to do like a three-way remote. So, but I'm gonna be here, so maybe I got something lined up. There you go. It's just gonna be just me, <laughs> that, the Rod and Hour and the Mafia Memoir. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, that's good. All right. Well, you guys have a well, great Well, I hope day. to you see you guys at SEMA. You oh, will we'll be there. We'll be there. So, We're gonna be there, so yeah. we'll see you there. All right. All right. You have a great day, brother. All right. All right. You too. All right. Bye. Bye now. See ya.